All right, I'm running out of time. I've got a ton of colors left over. Uh, I just did a live on Artapalooza. So, yeah, I mixed way too much resin. Uh-oh. But I got to use it up soon. So we're doing a kind of one of those kitchen sink, everything in it, kind of dirty pours. So let's see what happens. resin i was doing some masks with resin i have a hard time saying that word masks <laughs> anyway bear with me um so i wanted a variety of colors and well yeah that's what i got is a variety of colors all right um but i've got a lot left over my resin time is running out soon and <laughs> I, I gotta get busy so i'm trying to put these in order I guess what I should have said is uh, a hint as far as doing a dirty pour when you've got everything in the kitchen sink going in is to create a, um, a transition that one color would blend into another color really well. Like for example here, I've got a peacock green and I've also got a pink that's kind of like that Pepto pink. Obviously those two colors wouldn't work well together. So what I've done let me just pull this out real quick. Hang on a second. Whoop. Is I kind of put it in order of what will blend in well. Obviously, the green will go well into the blue and the purple. And I decided to put the pink in between because I have another purple over here. Um, in fact, you know what? I actually might change my mind a little bit. This is such a cool purple. It's one of those... Uh, it's an indigo, so it's got a little bit of tones of blue and purple in it. So that might transition really, really well together. And that's kind of the order I'll pour them in. However, I do also have some chunky glitters that I will probably pour in separate. And then, of course, I've got some white. So, yeah, I did mention kitchen sink. The only thing I'm missing is a lot of warm tones. And here we go. I almost always start off with a little bit of white. I don't know. It's just a habit of mine, but that's what I do. Okay. So I do think I'm going to do, I've got a really fine kind of a pearly color that I will incorporate into here. But I think the chunky glitters, I'm going to pour them in afterwards where I want them and I, the design talks to me. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with this peacock. And you know what? I think what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna go for it. Why not? And it doesn't mean I'm gonna pour this entire thing into the tray. I'll see how much resin I have left. But for right now, I have to use it up anyway. So, Time is of the essence right now. Okay. So in the next color I've got is I believe it, the Tahitian Sunrise, which is that pretty periwinkle blue kind of color. Pour all that in there. So it's kind of like one of those, what they call shift colors. You know me, I like chameleon shifting colors, interference colors, things that play with light. Um, and I think the reason for that is I like the dimension that uh, resin gives you and you can get that sense of depth. And so playing with the sense of depth as well as playing with colors is just a winning combination. So this is indigo. Now this is the first time I've used indigo, or first time I've mixed it up. And this is a Just Resin color. Um, by the way, at the end of the video, 
Uh, for those that aren't used to my videos, I try and put a picture of the colors I use. And in the description below, um, look for Artist Till Death. Uh, that's where I usually get most of my colors that I mix in with my uh, paints. Unless it's a uh, uh, Lores. And Lores, I primarily use that when I do my uh, painting, dry painting with molds and such. But I have used it straight on in resin before. It's, they're gorgeous colors as well. Anyway, I'm going to ramble a little bit because I am not very good at promoting myself. So I'm going to promote myself a little bit. So bear with me. I'm trying to get some stuff online on my Etsy store and just finally put it out there because it's like that's the next step. And I'm trying to put a range of items, meaning like uh, price ranges. All right, obviously the highest ones are going to be my trays. Uh, and especially the trays that have my illustrations in place. But um, I also have a lot of those little ring bowls in there. And uh, I'm going to be putting some jewelry up there too. And just stuff that I've made with my leftover resin. And I've got some stickers. I'm so excited. I've wanted to do stickers for a long time. And now that I've got some pieces that are turning out really super cool and I think trans translate well into stickers, I just kind of went for it. And I think I'm gonna put together packs of stickers. Like uh, I've got uh, a pack of four, like little two inch stickers. Um, and then the other one is there's two three-inch stickers, and they're uh, one's a holographic one, and then the other one uh, is a regular one. Um, but all of them, I think what I'm going to do is only have that art available in that particular size. So I'm not not going to say like um, I do dragon picture one, and you know put it out in all different sizes. I think I might just only put it out in like whatever size it comes out the first time. I hope I made sense. Let's say Dragon A only comes out in like, you know, two inch stickers. I've got a big four inch one that's gorgeous. So, okay. So the rest of this I am going to leave for placing down later. And I don't have any, oh, that's a big cup. I wonder if I got enough for two trays. <laughs> All right, let me get my tray real quick. Actually, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Ah. All right. There's a lot of resin in that. I am not going to pour all of that in there, but I'm definitely going to put a chunk. Okay. There we go. Purple is pretty. Right. Is that enough? That's the question. to do for the skin coat because the skin coat can come through when you have things that activate cells and such so I decided not to do the skin coat first well, heck with it I think I need to do the rest of it
I'm sorry, I'm concentrating. I'm not being a chatterbox. All right. I think that's good. And I'm going to pour the some definitely some glitter in there later, but I want to move this first because if I put the glitter in now, it's going to disperse throughout the entire thing as I'm moving and rolling it. And that just might add texture coming through, and I don't want to do that. It'll kind of act like little sprinkle bits, like salt and pepper. I'm hoping I can roll that little curly bob over. Let's see. Trying to heat up the resin a little bit so it'll flow a little better. Always, always, always move your heat source around. You don't want to burn your resin. Oh, there it goes. It's behaving. So, a couple of these colors are the first time I've ever used this color. Like that indigo purple I was talking about and this uh, lighter tone purple which I wish you could see it from my point of view. It's really shell pearly like. And then uh, that pink is very new to me too. I have got something in my resin. You see how it's kind of creating a dam or a, uh, a shape there? I have to pick that out. And this peacock is also a new color, so you're getting several new colors here. I uh, ordered one of uh, Erica's mystery boxes, and uh, she knows me well. <laughs> she knows I like bold colors, and she definitely picks them out for me. Okay, so that little thingy's bugging me. If you do have something, and you have some a dirty pour going on, ugh. It's a big thing. What the heck is that? It's better to do it and pull it out while you're tilting it and moving it around early on versus doing it towards the end. Because that way the movement can help compensate for you pulling it out in the first place. The white is color passion. So we got a lot of colors going over the white. So we might get a bunch of cells tomorrow. And sometimes they can develop overnight. But it's one of those um, paste that when the color goes over the white, that's when you get your cell behavior. And I saved a little bit of extra white so that way if I needed to pour some, you know, felt like the piece needed some, I could do that. Well, this is real exciting. <laughs> this is interesting, the little fingers that are coming out of this. So I always do trays with dirty pours primarily because I can contain it and do minimal uh, manipulation with it. And I get the best results as far as colors and them not muddying up too much. Because it's easy to overwork it and get muddy, muddied colors. All right. 
Try to bring that down a bit. Okay, I'm liking that. Let's see how much we can bring that down. All right, before I get too far, let's see. I have got some chunky glitter from Color Obsession. And this is one of their chameleon glitters. So we're gonna pour some of that in here. Let's see if I can get a little bit here just to have some somewhere else. So I always like to have it designed intentionally. And then I've got another one that is one, I don't even know the names of them. <laughs> That's why I put the photos at the end because it's like, oh, uh, I don't know, it's the pretty white one with the chunks. Yeah, I'm real good at descriptions. It's very hard when this stuff starts thickening up to get it to stop. Let's see, I don't think I'll put it. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna take my trusty skewer, handy dandy tool. I don't want to get rid of the blob on the end of it. There we go. I think I need to steal another one. It's got quite a collection of nibs and bits and pieces on the end of it. <laughs> I've lost my nice point. Let's see. You know what? You can tell how thick the resin is when you can get a good line going through and you can keep that line for a long time. I think I just ran it through the glitter there. Oh no. Oh, that made a mess. Okay. Now the reason why I wanted to do that beforehand I was going to torch it and manipulate it a little bit more. Just heating it up, helping get rid of the bubbles. Okay. And I'm going to use my skewer to kind of break up the white a little bit, especially through the glitter. And a little curly cue that dragged. Make it look a little bit more intentional. All right. Get my heat gun. Let's see, do I need any more white? I'm wondering. I have a thought here, so bear with me for a second.
breaking up the white a little bit. Get a little bit more of a feathery look. And also the other colors that are around the glitter area. It helps soften lines. I'm bringing up some of the dark. That was unintentional, but I like it. All right, I'm slow down. I bring in some of the uh, wispies over the glitter. The glitter stays at the base and the wispies look like they're on top. And when this cures, it gives that dimensional quality to it. So that, I like that there. And it also gets rid of that hard line of me just pouring that big old blob of glitter. There's a little bit of it there, but I don't mind it too much. Or do I? Hmm. And then I got a little bit of the purple going over it too. And I got cells going over that, which I didn't expect. You know what? I'm lying. I'm going to go ahead and put some here. I just dragged it through it, which is good. So I'm not worried about cleaning up the size until I'm done. Because, well, I'm a sock. I think we is gonna leave it here. Yes. Alright. Until tomorrow, I think. But wait, 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 wait. I'm gonna bring him for a close up. Alright, here we go. Kitchen sink pour. Guess almost unicorn style, huh? Try and do this nice and smooth. Big patch of color will kind of give your eye a little bit of a place to rest. A lot going on with this. Oh, I just saw an area here. We've got interesting cells developing and I got glitter showing through the cells, which I love. I have to admit these glitters are fun. They're like a bunch of different sizes. Look at that. And it really adds a nice little mix of stuff. So I'll just get a little bit of alcohol on a paper towel and clean these edges up. It won't take but a moment. Oh yeah, I think this is pretty. I love that indigo right there. That's a pretty color. All right, guys, till tomorrow. Check on the piece. Uh oh. <laughs> okay. You're gonna love this. Right, let me do an overhead and bring you in. Ooh, some fun things happened. Look at this area. This was an unexpected surprise. I love the shimmer and the cream contrast. That's cool. God, this glitter is nuts. Check out over here. Isn't that interesting? I love how there's a little bit of lines going through it. That's a luscious color there. Little peekaboos with the uh, the glitter coming in through the cells. 
and the wispiness going over the glitter. Oh, that's stinking cool. This turned out to be a really fun piece. Like all she needs is a flick coat and she's ready to find a home. Look at that, all that glitter, that's sparkly. Remember there's two different shades. Uh, there's the, the darker one and the clear one going through there and right in the middle they kind of blended when I worked with the heat gun and it kind of rolled one over the other. So yeah, very pretty. All right, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, definitely hit the bell to get notified next time I put a video up. And don't forget, I've got descriptions down below for my Etsy store because this guy is going to go up in the Etsy store. Or I should say this girl. Um, this is definitely a girly, girly tray, but I think the guys would like it too. Anyway. This will be in my uh, Etsy store, as well as the other links in the description for any products I use. And most of the colors come from ours till death. So also check with the photos at the end of this video. Of course, it'll be before this part. And you'll have the color names that I used and the glitter names too. There you go.